Okay, fifth graders, here we go. Chapter 3, section 8. And this is all about solving word problems. So let's look at the example they give us here. It says, in, in 1980, a painting sold for $1,575. In 2015, the same painting sold for five times as much. What was the price of the painting in 2015? Well, you can see the steps that they've taken here. First, they did a bar diagram. And uh, in each one, they put 1575 in 2015, and then one bar, because that was its cost, in, in 1980. And um, really, all you'd have to do is multiply 1575 times 5 to get P. P represents the price. And there, they've done it there for us. Um, several of the problems you'll be doing, they ask you to do bar diagrams, and it might help you guys to do them. Um, convince me, how can you use estimation to justify that the answer is reasonable? Well, um, so instead of making it 1575 how about if we just made it $1,500 times 5? Uh, I think that would be a pretty fair estimation. And then we could do just do 15 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 more is 7. 75. 75. And then factor in the two zeros that we didn't include. 7,500. That's pretty close to what they had said. 7,875. Okay. Um, guided practice. I'm not going to do all of these for you, but I'll definitely help you guys with some. <clears throat> Write a real-world problem that uses multiplication and then draw a bar diagram and write an equation to solve your problem. Um, yeah, give that a shot, you guys. I think you could do that. You can just make up your own. And, and don't forget to draw the bar diagram and then write the equation. Number two here, it's Sharon's Stationery Store. Store has 1,219 boxes of cards. May's Market has three times as many. How many boxes does she have? Well, they, um, B <clears throat> represents the number of boxes. And you can see that they did May's three times as many. And Sharon's is just one box. Okay, so um, what do we need to do here? Just simply 1,219 times 3. I think you guys could do that. That was number 2. Number 3, let's move uh, down a little bit here to the independent practice. There are 14 theaters at the mall. Each theater has 175 seats. How many seats are there in all? Well, I think you guys could do that. We're talking about 175 times 14. Uh, number four, Brad lives 12 times as far away from the ocean as, I think it's Jean or Janine. If Janine lives 48 miles from the ocean, how far from the ocean does Brad live? Well, 48 times 12. Again, you guys can do that. Number five, a hardware store ordered 13 packs of nails from a supplier. Each pack contains 155 nails. I can see where this is going. How many nails did the store order? So 155 times 13. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's move down to problem solving. Let's take a look at these. Uh, Sandy School has 1,030 students, and Carla's has three times as many. Write an equation to find S, that's the number of students probably in Carla's school. Then solve your equation. Okay, so what would that be? That'd be 1,030 times 3. All right. Um, Jupiter is five times the distance from Earth as the Sun. 
the Earth is 93,000 miles, I'm sorry, 93,000, 93 million miles from the Sun. How far is Jupiter? So it's going to be Jupiter times that distance times 5. Okay, so let me show you an easy way to do this. Um, instead of writing 93, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and doing that times 5, um, I would just do 93 times 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. Put down the 5, carry the 1. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 1 is 46. Okay. How many zeros did we not factor in? Well, there's six zeros that we didn't do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the biggest question is where do we put the commas? Okay, remember the commas, we're going to um, count every three places from the far right. So we're starting here at the far right. And I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 zeros. And then I'm going to put a comma right between the third and the fourth zero. And then one, two, three more zeros, and I'm going to put a comma right there. So that number is pretty big. It's um, 465 million, which is pretty close to a, a half a billion, because 500 million, 500, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, 500 million is a half a billion. Okay. All right. Um, what do we got left here? Higher order thinking. William travels only on Saturdays and Sundays and has flown 1,020 miles this month. Jason travels every weekday and has flown 12, 1,200 miles this month. If each man travels about the same number of miles each day, who travels more miles per day for this month? Explain. <laughs> So, um, so let's look at this here. So William, only on Saturdays and Sundays, and has flown 1,200 miles. I'm sorry, 1,020 miles. So that's two days a week. Two days a week. And then I'm going to put down... Um, 1,020. Jason travels 1,200 miles. Uh, he travels every weekday. That's five times. Five days a week. And that's uh, 1,200 miles. All right? Um, if each man travels about the same number of miles each day, who travels more miles per day? Well, um, that's two days a week. And are they talking about a month here? Yep, a month. All right. So, um... Well, they're not asking you actually to solve this. So they're both a little bit over a thousand. Okay. And if he only travels two days a week, that means he's going a lot more in his two days than Jason is in his five days. I hope that makes sense to you. I'm not sure how else I could explain it. Um, look at it this way. Um, if we were divide, to divide a thousand, a thousand divided by two, and a thousand divided by five, which one's going to have larger which one's going to be larger? Well, what's half of a thousand? If you're dividing something by two, we're cutting it in half. That's 500. And um, how many fives go into a thousand? That's 200. So obviously, um, you're going to have a larger amount per day here 
which is this one right here, which happens to be William. So it says explain. Um, well, how could we explain that? I guess you could say William travels about 500 miles per day. Um, and that's kind of an estimation because I didn't add in the, the 20 here and the 200, but that's okay. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. That was kind of a hard one. Uh, number nine, let's see here. Number nine, let me move this up a little bit. Uh, Wong can fit 12 packets of coffee in a small box and 50 packs of coffee in a large box. He has 10 small boxes of coffee and would like to reorganize the packets into large boxes. How many large boxes could he fill? Explain. So he can fit 12 packets of coffee in a small box. So I'm going to I'm going to draw a small box here and I'm going to call it 12. And 50 packets of coffee in a large box. So I'm going to draw a large box. And I'm going to put 50. He has 10 small boxes of coffee and would like to reorganize the packets into large boxes. How many boxes could he fill? Well, you guys think about that. I think that's as far as I'm going to help you with that one. You think about it. See what you come up with. Um, 10 and 11, multiple choice. You guys could do those. Okay, that's it. Uh, we're wrapping up chapter three. We're almost done. And I will see you guys today.